Okay, what's up everyone? This is Ray. Welcome to another wait. Okay, another video of Witch and Warlock. So this is part three, I guess, for this game. And yeah, what's happened for the last time? I will not quite remember. What should happen last time? I cannot quite recap it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Oh yeah, we learned some spell, isn't it? Isn't it? Anyway, so let's go to the... Uh, let's start this. It's August 9, 2024. What? Is that the last time that I played this game? Okay, let's go. Oh, okay. Today I went to work. Nothing special happened and I earned a good amount of pocket money. Okay, the one thing I really want to know is... It's a day 24. October, day 24. Crimson dust. Okay. The thing that I really want to know now is, uh, what I just realized when I was already playing those, uh, the previous part of this game is, I don't sh quite sure where I should look at what the time left for us, what the day left for us to learn all the, all the spell because most of the, most of the game that I play, like, if, in this kind of thing, the kind of tell us like oh we're gonna have it at this uh time or the day now before that you will face the big day you know and for this the fate where she going to take the exam at uh halloween day i was quite curious where i mean i'm quite not curious but I'm quite not. Sh I'm not quite sure where should I look at. Uh, like how many days left for me before I, before the Halloween day, you know. Was I just for the potion? But it's better to make the potion. I only have ten. Uh, Laura will triple your potion output for your third choice. Okay. The thing is, what kind of I think we already learned it. Wait for a moment. What's going on over here? I thought I already played and learned some spell. Philosophies. Isn't it? It's going to have like kind of like a thing over here if I already learn it. Okay, this is weird. Let me go and check it first. So yeah. We're here until I figure out just just for a moment, you know? It just like it's weird. Like I already have that and I it, it doesn't look like I learned anything over here. Which is quite weird okay okay let i will come back to you guys later okay so i already just making a portion but i don't know if this is already that being read by me or you guys already seen this scene but we're just going to try to figure out actually what's going on zero guess what uh what I guess. Fine. Neither you nor I have time to find, I guess. Yes. Okay. He screamed at me skeptically. Did you? Okay, I think we already read this. So I'm just going to skip you guys out. So come back later.
So as you guys can see here, actually, yeah, what I thought is true. Let's see, I already this is already the three thing that I have done before. Um, yeah, it should have the this symbol over here, like the the tick over here. That I mean, I already done that spell. I already acquired that spell, which is kind of weird. Like I I remember that I I saved this file. And uh, you don't have, and uh, you guys don't have to worry. All the conversation is the same as the part two. Okay, there, there's you guys missing nothing. I just like repeating playing the part two all over again. This <laughs> it just like so. What the ah uh, something like that. But it's fine, I guess. So let me just. Start with other. We have like this too. Let's see what can we do. Hmm. I think I would like to do this like one portion first, like this tree, scuttle wear a night creature. So let's. We have two of purple portion. So I will let's start with this. I'm telling you, the zombie heart is the auto magnum opus. A final story had never been made in history forever. No. And I'm telling you that it's a lot of rubbish. Yeah, we even read the same book. Excuse me, Falk. Could you perhaps help me? We both look at when the elderly gentleman interrupt our debate, which I was totally right about, gesturing toward a haunted sculpture on the top shelf. Of course. Of course, my dear. I'm immediately turned to pick up a step stool from behind the counter. Right. Here, let me... I can do it. There's no need, my adorable little servant will fetch it for me. Camilla puckle her lip and let out soft whistle. Oh, cute! Little bat. Not in real life. Instant instantaneously. Wait, okay. A small group of chittering birds swoop from the top of the rafter and gather around her, gleefully spinning. She gestures over the sculpture and cluster for open in it in a swarm. They pick up the heavy stone between their little claw and carry it down into Camilla's waiting hand. Mm -hmm. Thank you, young lady. As he received the product, he gave up both a small note before continuing to browse the store selection. Oh, Camilla, Carmilla, that was amazing. I stared in awe at Carmilla little pose, pose, pose. What to say that pose of bed? Why they flap around her? Why even lay on her shoulder and nuzzle against her cheek? In response, she affectionately pat the top of her head. She's like a spooky Cinderella. Right. Adorable darling, no? I love her. Them mill about. Can you talk to them? Yes. Indeed, I can. It's an inherent skill we, vampire, have being able to communicate with creatures of the night. You know? Essentially, anything that creates crawl or pet is a close eddy. She pressed her index finger to her lips and wing. Wow. Whoa, but I didn't see your eyes glow this time. Are you not controlling them? Why, Faith? Not at all. I would never control a friend. At any rate. This is a simple creature that, if I treat with kindness, will aid us in our daily life as well as dangerous situation. But you call them your servant. No. For um, my dear. No. This part of the family of Beth have been bonded to me for a generation. They may as well be of my own blood. And we do not sub subjugate female. The bat swung closer around her, butting their head against her arms and hand for bats. She ob obliged and gently carried their black fur. Wow. Is it something I could learn to? Maybe. I don't see why not. That is assuming I feel like teaching you. Uh. Hmm? She smirked, sauntered around, sauntered over to my side and let her work 
carriage my ear. Apologize for your anxiety and moreover our wrong opinion from earlier and perhaps I may I may consider your request. You know? If only to celebrate your new fun sense of taste. Seriously, are we the boo? Uh well, I'm definitely right, but well, suddenly I see the error of my way and think you were absolutely right. It was complete rubbish. Right. Oh, is that so? Right. I just don't know how I didn't see it earlier, to be honest. As always, you are so much wiser than me and so gracious. Please teach me more so that I can be like you one day, Lady Carmilla. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. A little over at, my dear, but take it. No, do you remember not to demand service from just anyone? We have a delicate balance in our relationship that we have to uphold, you see. No. If some outsiders start bossing my back around, I will be obligated to defend them. <laughs> huh? I will never. I stare at her white eyes and hopeful. Hmm, perhaps. No. No. I mean, you've been such a great teacher, Carmilla. Double serious. Right. If I didn't have you showing me magic, I don't think I'd able to learn it. You're brilliant in every way imaginable. Carmilla barely suppressed a grin. <laughs> well, I suppose I can't deny that I have been the best teacher you have ever had. Alright, little witch, I'll teach you how to cast night creature. Alright, we acquire it. Her ego fat, Carmilla. Spend the next few hours teaching me how to create potion that can summon and communicate with creatures of the night. We start small with a few spider, then slowly move on to pra practicing with her bats. It takes up the entire rest of the day at the o at the shop. Still, I barely noticed that time had passed until the customer rushed in at the last minute because, of course, they will. Not like they have any upcoming exam that are sure to spell the impending doom. Excuse me, could you help me reach that school up on the top of shelf? Of course. Of course. My dear. Go ahead, my dear. Now, the, pre the perfect time to you to uh, try out your new skill. Night creatures. Spellcast. I whistle a small tune for the bat, just like Carmilla showed me. A few photo over, but they don't even have half of the intuition they gave her. Bring me this call. I point out to the stop shot. They stare at me. I'm moving. Come on. Sweet doll. Um, please? Nothing. Pretty please? I'm sure of what else to do. I take a few berries from my lunch and offer it to them. A bat sniffed them for a moment but they hesitantly accept the food. I inch toward the chef causing causing them. Along. Eventually, they managed to grab the skull, but not with the almost dropping it to the floor. Thankfully, I stumbled forward in the nick of time, cash it and hand it to the customer. Right. Here you go. Thanks. And uh, don't worry, everyone knew at some point. After paying for the item and leaving a pity tip for me, he exit the shop. Once he gone, I turned to Carmilla with a fun, big enough that my button lip just jutted out. I don't get it. What did I do wrong? Oh, sweet thing. Your approach could have been better, but there's no need to take it personally. No. I am more familiar to this bet than you are, after all. You need to build a much greater relationship with them to gain some kind of trust they, had, they and I have. She pet one of the bets for emphasis, smiling down at her company all the while. I hold out a finger in response a single bit further down and wrap it um, the cloth around the middle of it then hang upside down. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I smile, I smile to myself. Yes. We just have to spend more time together. Dun, dun, dun. Got no money. Dun, dun, dun. Got that great. Please oh please come to my... It? I saw around the corner just to catch Damien sitting near the stair. What are they up to today? Phew, almost finished. Just one more. Just one more after this around the knee. Damien. Hiya! Huh. Whoa! I opened my palm like a baseball catcher, half expecting one of their eyes to pop out surprise. Thankfully everything stayed put this time. 
Faye, please don't sneak out on me like that. S sorry, sorry, I didn't know you were so focused. But what are you doing? I thought I heard a whoop. To imitate the sound, I zip up my arm in a long, exaggerated stance. Oh, that was. Oh, I think we already read this. Maybe can we can just pay it up, you know? Let's go. Okay. You know I haven't prepared any precaution yet. Oh. Oh. Don't worry, I will teach it to you anytime. Thank you. Thanks, Damien. You are the best. You're the best, Damien. Hmm. Um, already learned this. This. I think let's try the blue and the red one. Blue, red. Blue, red, red. Um, yeah, just this. If you put three different portions, I will give you two red extra portion. Oh, uh, let's do this. Start. Yay! But we got the yellow one. It's fine. Nightshade, Nightshade is the best. Find you someone from the rest. I seem quite to find myself as dusters inside of the human shop. Doing my best to keep the ware clean and tidy. Which come to think of it was kind of necessary. It was starting to get gross in here, especially the drapery. Ah. The circuit this curtain made me want to sneeze. I should probably take them outside before I start burying them. And a once, a two, and... A one, two, three. Boom. Oh my god. Why is it so uncomfortable? Uncomfortable. Okay. How about this? How about this position? Okay. No. I go to talk them down and cloud of dust ambush me as I do so. By the time it's clear, there is, isn't a wall behind the drapery but ancient portrait frame in gold. A family dark haired woman gazed down at me with empty yet captivating violet eyes and I wait a second. Carmilla? Yes, sweetness. I don't hear her approach, so when I whip my head around to see her standing beside me, I jump up my skin a little. This is you, right? Not like a great 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 grandma that also happened to be your doppelganger? Mm, indeed it is. What kind of eyes you have? This is a portrait of your truly, the internally gorgeous Countess of Cornola. Carnolia. Sorry, Cornos. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. And what's an error that was? Amazing. Amazing? You were nobility? She fold her arm and raised her eyebrow at me as she gave me chest a small poke with her in that finger. Come on. Well, I most definitely still am. Yes, yes of course, my lady. But wait. What is this painting even doing here anyway? She doesn't respond. Rather, when I look over, she's tracing a finger over the filament on the portrait frame. No doubt gathering dust from wherever error she's seeing that far off case. Well... Just a minute, O oh Countess. The frame a little curved. Wait. Oh no, Faye! Don't touch! Too late. Too late. I grab the frame and adjust it accordingly. When I do, a scrap of paper fall out of behind the painting. Oh, what's this? I leave out the parchment and spread the pencil sketch of a woman with hair that flows like an ocean wave and eyes as dark as moonless night. There is something mischievous in her smile that draws me in. Wow. wow, what a beauty! Don't touch it! Okay. Before I can react, Carmilla snatched the picture from my hand. With fury in her eyes and crease in her brow. I blink, take it a bit and a bit hurt. It's just drawing, so what her problem? Unless. Unless. Of course, does she know her? I mean, which her that we're talking about right now? Hmm. Let's we just ask her, right? A friend of yours? 
Carmina sighed, take a lingering look at the photo and gently run a finger across the girl pepper chip. In a manner of speaking? Yes. My greatest hunt. She was my greatest hunt. I have never since pursued a human of her caliber. Well... I wouldn't to bet there is impossibly good story behind it all. Yes. Oh, there is most certainly is. There is a glint in her eyes as she take one look. Last look at the portrait. Slowly she rolled it back up with the extreme tenderness. I guess it's no surprise at all that picture is still in good condition when she handled it like that. Six centuries ago. Six centuries ago, this little delicacy came forth with to my manner. She was. She was hoping to hunt me as a revengeful incident that occurred in her village, and be known that she herself would become my quarry. For months. For months, we played a game of cat and mouse, pushing each other to the limit but never quite gaining the upper hand. Until one day. Eventually, I cornered her in the alleyway. I leaned forward as it sitting on the edge of my seat. Oh. And then what? You drank her blood? Mm -hmm. Nearly to the last drop. Carmilla smiled and yet there's something false about her chill when she speak. I see her run her fingertip along the edge of the page. Until, Until some no good busybody arrived to save her. I barely escaped with my life that night. Oh. Gosh, how you do it? I asked one of them naturally. She flicked her head off her shoulder with the back of her hand. You know? Vampires are a pet predator, as you should be fully aware by now. When faced against mere mortal, we always come out on top. Hmm. Okay, but it's that's all true. Yeah. Why do you let you about to cry? Carmilla jaw hardened. I feel like she's about to chew me out. But after a long and very awkward pause, she laughed. She laughed, the kind of laugh of someone who has resigned themselves to most pitiful fate. I suppose. I suppose it isn't easy to hide a fear of the heart from a master matchmaker, isn't it? You caught me twice today, little witch. I opened my mouth to reply, but... The pain look on her face bring me to a halt. An unknown sensation start to build up within my chest. With a sigh, she tucked the roll of paper bag behind the portrait. My dear. But Faye, my dear, there are some plots that are not worth digging in. Her piece spoken, Carmilla written to do an inventory, leaving me alone with my talk. I guess there's no helping her right now, no matter how much I want to be there for her. Yeah, something just like that. There's a thing that should be leaving unknown. Maybe it's just for the best. Something is just hard to open up the old wound. Which is not good for the question either. Yeah, move on. What should we do? Let's learn the wheel. Let's go. Zero. Zero. I've been thinking. Well Splendid. Will it because something you intend to do on a regular basis? Right. You have been around Halloween Town for ages, haven't you? You could say that. Well, Remember when we first met that night on Century Girl? I was a snotty little kid. Why, why the past then, Faye? <laughs> and when I suddenly saw you glaring and hovering right in front of me, I burst into tears. I, I wasn't glaring. And I clearly remember I apologized repeatedly. Right. You did. You did. I stopped crying because it looked like I was scaring you even more than you were sparing me. Not the most glorious highlight of my career as a portergist, I will admit. A sneaker escaped my lips. Pretty glorious to look back on now, though. Mm -hmm. You probably know all kind of things about Halloween Town. Probably. Such are the generation of students who attend Dreamer, Dream, Dreamer Mer High. A school of law and distinguished history. And the graduation exam they had to take every Halloween? I see. Ah, yeah, I see what you're after now. Can you teach me? Teach me, Zero. I teach me a spell that will help me pass all the Halloween exam. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, no such spell exists. That's how it is. Estero does a great job at changing the nature and layer of the exam year by year, and the obstacles she set are unpredictable even to me. No way. Alice, alike. Oh, woe is me. But. 
However, one test I noticed she is particularly fond of is devise a monster that will try to obstruct the student. How scary! What is the monster weakness? It's difficult to say. One on some years, the monster she used was weak to fire, on other weak, on other weak to ice. Maybe. Some could only be overcome by magic; other had to be stopped with physical object. How depressingly unpredictable! In a great show of exasperation, I throw my hands up into the air and knock back my head. There's no shock at the passing, huh? Actually. But come to think of it, none of them are um, invulnerable to noise. I perk back up. Noise? Yeah. I can teach you, Will. A spell that let you emit a screech so loud it's different a stun anything within hearing range. Mm -hmm. It also temporarily blocks your ears so you won't become a part of the affected party. Mm -hmm. Hellhorn, Im, Harp, Harpies, even Dragon. Hit any of them we will at full blast and they will need and they all need a minute or ten to regain the sense. Maybe. It could buy you breathing room you need to get away. That's not useful. Wait, did you see Dragon? Don't worry. Oh, don't worry about that. The school made her stop using the school made her stop using that on the student after too many constant parent complaints. Anyway, prepare yourself. Eh? I'm going to teach you how to kiss Will. Yay! Ready? Wait. One second. You nearby? Yes. Have been war and are all and are out with King the Hellhounds. Damien? Yeah. Has taken off their ear. Okay, good. Zero stop his ear with he, his finger and scrunch his face. Alright. Now <laughs> Judging by the expression of Incruciating pain on zero face. Will is even more powerful than I ever imagined. Stop. Enough! Enough! Stop! Eh? I was just starting to having fun. Starting to have fun. Stop it. Any louder and you will cause nearby window and mirror to shatter. Think. Not to mention all those vials of potion you have stocked up. Wouldn't want to repurchase all those for an exam now, will you? Was I really that loud? Yes. You were. Be sure to use it carefully and sparingly. Zero for his arm, looking quite pleased with himself. Huh. I'd love to see Lu on Estella's face when she finds out her precious monster can all be beaten by someone screaming very, very loudly. <laughs> you know, Zero, I suppose you on the first name basically with Miss McWish. She's so forbidden and severe to everyone. Oh, That's because you haven't known her since the first day she. First day she arrived at Halloween Town, lost and penniless, and running away from Broken Heart. Miss Magwish? Broken Heart? How? Who? Why? When? Don't. I'm not going to gossip with you about your superior. Pretty to spell a couple more times when nobody is nearby, nearby obviously. And, then? and when the day of reckoning come, Will and... Will and watch Magwish monster flee in terror. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mr. West told me to go to Surreal Show and get a rather really specific item for customer. He gave me very clear instruction about how to navigate the expensive catacomb like area. But how am I supposed to remember all that? When I found the item I'm supposed to get, I caught a glimpse of pretty dagger just a few shelf over and quickly went to inspect it. And I expected, I found myself utterly lost afterward. Not knowing really how to get back to stair, I cast Will to make noise and wait for Mr. Wells. When he finally came, he was surprised to see Dagger, Dagger which he thought was lost. Thankfully, the joy quickly quenched his anger. In fact, he even gave me small bonus to for finding it. Yay! Mr. Wells! Okay, I need to change position. On how I actually do right now. Ah, oh, God. Okay, I need to sit. Okay. Okay. You know Zero? Yes. Yes, please. Well, I've been thinking. I know very 
though about you, don't I? That's right. You know very little about everything, Faye. That is why you're in such imminent danger of flunking your SM and getting a spell for Dreaming Mirror High. Speaking of which... Speaking of which, how far did you progress with your next study plan? You've been by my side the whole time. You probably know the answer to this question better than I do. Oh, yeah. Do I? In which case, I must warn you that unless you start planning seriously and stop wasting time asking in a question, right. that's just it. I fold my arm across my chest in the most ex exasperated expression I can master. Master. Must. Zero isn't escaping this time. Uh -huh. Eh? Whenever I bring up the topic of your pal, you try to deflect it and change the subject. Do I? Do I now? Yes. You do, Zero. You're my oldest friend and I want to know more about you. But if you don't wish to tell me anything, all you have to do is say so. And I will stop because I respect your privacy. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of privacy. He let out a difficult story. Actually. The reason I don't like to talk about my pet is hardly the glamorous. I simply have not much of pets to talk about. But you haven't been portraged quite a long time, haven't you? Yes. For much, much too long. My earliest memories. My earliest memory were of hunting the north part of the graveyard in, in the name escaped me. It was. It was a quaint little English village. I remember. I remember the bed on the church steep, steeple, a gleam in midday. Midday, and the low set chime, chimes, chimes of the church bell, telling the hour to those whom time no longer means anything. His eyes are hazy like a night sky as he reminis reminis reminisces, 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 I'm sorry, about the distant memory of his past. Oh. It sounds so peaceful there. He whips his head up toward me, my comment having broken him from his trance. No. Peaceful? It was so unbearable boring that it drove me out of my mind. Eventually. One fine night, I decided I couldn't stand it any longer and left. Mm -hmm. I went here and there, hunting whatever look took my fancy. Lonely wind, sweet road, crumbling, disused castle, and dark, quaking town. Were you fond of those days? Not a bit. In the past. I was light and free and at a loss, so to speak. I drifted endlessly wherever the wind blew. Mm -hmm. One night, oh, one night, sorry. One evening, I went up here in Halloween Town. Actually. I, had, I hadn't planned to, plan to stay longer than I did anywhere else, but for one reason, after another, I never was able to get around to living. Eventually, I just got used to the idea of living here. Is there anything you miss? But living here is great, isn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see that. I really like to see... I'd really like... He already said that he don't miss anything. Hmm. Let's get here. I gaze into zero eyes, which have become low and smoldering like Amber about to die. Esting, instinctively, instinct, instinctively, I rush out to touch him but cheat myself at the last moment. Zero observes this with sad smile. What does that mean? What does that, what does what mean? Well. That the thing holding you is losing its grip. What does that mean? That means... That's me, my memory is weakening in my old age, which is pardonable, which... Since I have been in Halloween Town long before you were even born. But... But you, my dear Faye, are young, and unless your memory start improving dramatically, and with a great haste, you will fail your Halloween exam and get expelled from school. Uh... Fine, be that way. I turn my boot in half, just as I am about to leave my pants, zero speak up. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Uh, hmm? What for? Never mind. Nothing. Never mind. 
We spend the rest of the night in companionable, companionable silence. It's kind of like a weird say that. Bro. Actually, yeah, if we can make it, what do we want to buy it? Just thinking. Okay, and now let's really try to run scuttle. Fair Nightshade, the wonderful, the thoughtful, the um. Hey, Damien. Y yes? Do you ever get the uncanny feeling that you were f you have forgotten something? Because I'm getting the real bad right now. Like, super duper bad. Really? I don't think we missed anything on the shopping list and you didn't forget your wallet today. Right. right. What could it be? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> oh, well, it might be nothing. Maybe I just forgot to brew I the brew I learned earlier. Help me. Here, can you put this for me? I have to unlock the door. Of course. Of course. Oh, you forgot the key. I hand them in the bag in one of my hands as I fiddle around for the key. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, crap apple. Did you maybe find something you forgot? Well, I think I left my key on the table. Zero is going to roast the, stuffing, the stuffing out of me if I call him to fish through the door again. Oh. Uh, uh, you don't need to call anyone. Please, Please allow me. They may set the bed down for the moment and pull gently a string onto their wrist. Huh? Your hand. The action caused their hand to fall right off, and they may change something under their breath. The finger called before jumping out and scuttling toward the van. <gasps> the hand managed to scroll into the house through the van cover while they may close their eyes to focus. We wait for a few moments, but eventually... Okay, okay I think I got it. The door swing open. Wow. Whoa, whoa, wow, Damien, what kind of myth is that? It's super handy. It's nothing. It's just a basic animation spell that my maker taught me a long time ago. But, but it kind of scares people, as you could guess, so I try not to use it very often. I'm sure. It'll be a great Halloween trick, that's for sure. Oh. Or if you want to use it for comedic effect with those give me a hand kind of joke, <laughs> they practically know how to write them so with a big smile, I wink and hold out my palm, fingers spread, was shaking the into a stickly. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. But if you're interested, I could probably teach you how to do it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But, but I rather keep my hand where they are for um personal reason. You know how it is. No, I don't mean it like that. Of course not. Of course not. Good goodness. I would never want to hurt you. My maker. my maker couldn't do it in the same way I can either, so he craft a living variation of the spell called Scuttle. Although... It was exactly like the one I used though. Oh. You mean I could just summon this embodied hand out of nowhere? Wouldn't someone want that back? Not quite. Not quite. It's more like illusionary copy, but it's hard to explain in words. Oh. I got it. In that case, teach me, Professor Damien. I'm ready to learn. Okay. Okay. Watch closely, please. I try to teach you how to cast cuddle. God's sake, finally another one. All right. All right, Bay. Repeat after me. Damien start the spell, and their finger curl again before hopping out onto the floor. I repeat after them. Scuttle. Yeah. I hold out my hand, and poof, I'm hand in hand with myself. Good work. Yes. Yes. Good. Be free, my five finger friend. I launch my clone hand like sending it into battle, and it's cut along after Damien's hand. Damien, Damien let's shake his hand. All right. <laughs> we shake, but the moment my hand let go of there, my new companion crumbled into a small pile of dust on the floor and disappeared. Oh no, did I mess something? I messed something up? They went too slow from this wall. I crouched down over where the 
appreciation had just been in dramatic morning of my sudden loss. Oh, you did wonderful job. But because it's just a copy, the illusion hand can ver last very long in the real world. With a horse for the spell to grab onto, it lasts about 30 seconds tops. 30 seconds? I gradually spring to my feet. I know, I want to call my head, my head next. No, you absolutely don't. Oh, why not? Think all the possibilities. Just, please, just trust me on this. Ne never ever try to create a copy of your own head. Okay, okay, but what about your? No. Oh, you know, fun sometimes. And you miss out the possibility of entire wish Brigade made up of the best matchmaker in Dreamer Mill High. They may watch as I fold my arm and pout, signaling my ear for different requests. They lay outside and really smile stuff at me. I think that's for the best. For the sake of humanity, I I think that's for the best. Yeah. Zero. Zero, zero, zero. I figured it out. Oh. How to pass your Halloween exam? No, no how to help you? To help me? Yes. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm don't follow. Well. I can't hug you and whenever I try, I end up messing with your essence, right? That's right, right Faye. Very annoying too. Hmm. Because I'm made of flesh and blood while you're spirit of ether and magic. Hmm. Taking you that little figure has it. Almost 180 years. I think I already read this, so let's give it. Okay. Crab apples. Uh, zero. Oh, we really need to have it. Okay. Fine. Maybe at that time we already have it, but this time we don't, so yeah. This and just one to grab. No, just two of this and one of this and third choice. Which one is considered as third? This one. Ah, yeah, let me just start. Ah, sure. Lauren struck the crate of heavy top when I wiped his hands against each other. Feeling accomplished yet unaware of my present. Hehe. <laughs> I think that's all the ever for today. Maybe now I can finally nap. <laughs> Lauren! Uh... Ugh. <laughs> Cute! Lauren shone stiffly to face me. His ear flattened against his head. Again. Which I told you a thousand times. My name is. I know, I know, Lawrence, right? I watch how his ears perk back up again. They look so soft, so fuzzy, so ugh. But now, how do you expect me to call you by your name if you don't use mine? Ah, I guess you have a point. His ear twitch a little and drop as he look away. Is there a pot hiding behind his mask? I, I, that's it. I can't hold myself back any longer. I'm so sorry. Sorry for her? Laura make a noise somewhere between whimper and a whine as I grab him in a headlock and ruffle his ear to my heart content. I discovered that if he scratched behind them, his foot start tapping, but he grabbed me by the shoulder and pulled me away before I can learn much more than that. What are you doing? <laughs> you you're just so unbelievable cute. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. You have to. <laughs> you can't just go around touching people like that. This us first. Oh, you so you will say yes if I. No. <laughs> but you are a toy for foolish people to play with. Now hearing is a lot more sensitive than yours. Every tap is an echo that re reverberate in my head. Oh. Oh, I can't imagine what the what that must be like. If I teach you, will you leave them be? Teach me, teach me. Oh gosh, you're going to show me how to have a super cute puppy ears? No. 
No punky hey. I will teach you what big ears. A spell to improve your hearing. Oh. Uh, oh well, I suppose that could be useful too. They're better to he heal you with. They are better to heal you with, my dear. Am I right? I went playful at him, and he thumped his paw against his forehead. <laughs> you are so. Anyway, pay attention. This is how you cast what beat ears. Yay! Oh, the last time we cannot. The last time we do learn what zero want to teach us, but this time because we don't have any blue potion, then zero cannot teach us. Ah! What big ears? I didn't think it was possible to improve your hearing draw through a few easy steps. But with a simple gesture and the magic word, everything is a lot more in focus. Otol just with Peter. How to say that? that should this work. this should have worked. Then put it here. I hear the bitter crawling around in the grass, the crow flapping their wing above us. Good. Good, anything else? Well... There are glasses clicking near the cafe down the hill from here and... Oh. What? Uh... Something is growing very really close by. Hmm. This isn't you, isn't it? No. no, but I don't hear a thing. Lawrence watched uh, uh, around the us carefully, alert and ready for action. He seemed to be taking this seriously. I hear the girl again, and we don't doubt it definitely coming from Lawrence. Are you sure it isn't you? Of course not. Of course it's not. Hmm. Hmm, go back home. The lesson is over. But Lawrence, Watch yourself. it might be unsafe. A witch that can use many spells won't be able to defend himself. He folds his arm and not affirmatively at his own deduction. I'll do it. I will look into the word notes by myself. Hmm. Alright. Lawrence turned to leave. I hear the growing again as he dashed off into the woods. That's when I realized that was his stomach, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, Laura, wait, it's okay. Maybe I'll bring a lot about a trap for a dog boy next time. But. So, what kind of spell we want to learn? But I guess. Let's go do a part time job this time. Today I went to work. Nothing special happened and I earned a lot a good amount of pocket money. That's all. I thought that as I was talking shop, I heard some students snickering and whispering to each other. Somehow I got a feeling they were up to no good, but I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. After improving my hearing I learned they were planning to drop a dark darkness bomb so they could rob us blindly, literally. I had them leave before they commit any harm. When I told Mr. West about the almost incident, he rewarded me for my trouble. So, so. Oh. So I guess let's create this one, this one, and this one. Oh, this is good. Uh, guys. Come again. That's dog. Come us see. Come see us again soon. The instant the last the customer leaves, Carmilla hums surely to herself and lock the front door for lunch. I'm about to take the first part of my burger when she turned to me with a sort of smug testification. We worked hard this morning, did we not? I'm positively parched. I stared at her with my mouth open, a very appalling sight, before clamping it shut. Parched? Oh, hold on. I will create your lunch for you and we can eat together. I go to look underneath the counter in case she left her bag. But there's nothing. Quickly, I race to bed. But there isn't anything in the ice box either. As I return, Carmilla eyes me, full of amusement. Did you forget your lunch today? Mm hmm, seems so. Whatever shall I do? Whatever shall I do? I look back on my own line. A lap of burger from last night's supper and a bottle of milk. I guess I could go after. Well, uh, if you need a drink, you can have some of mine. 
I trust your unopened an bottle to look Carmilla, but she may take a step back like a minch garlic. I'm pretty sure it's not. What gift? Um, no, thank you. Milk is not quite my taste. It never really satisfied me, you know. She's my gentle and solid over me. When I look into her, I see the same spot as when she look at Cosmo. It's chilling. I know what this, what she's doing, but her voice is so hypnotic. I almost caused my heart to skip a bit. But my darling little witch, do you know what will satisfy a thirsty vampire? Yes. Blood? If it bad enough that you want to enthrall me, I guess I could give you some money, but you owe me. Right. And it's better not hurt. <laughs> oh, Sifu, you always feel all surprised. Even when you know when, what I was up to, oh goodness, I feel a little embarrassed. She comes away and threw her hair around her index finger. Wow. Well, we're friends and you always helping me out, so I think it's the least I can do. Oh, You're so kind, not to mention 100%, right? I swear to you that I should take a tiny bit. Give me your hand, please. What the heck? I do exactly as she said. With one of her satisfied little hands, Camilla kneel before me and take my hand. Then gently press her lid to the back of my palm. I feel pinched a little more, but then nothing but a little dizziness. Carmilla lift her head and lick her lips before removing the handkerchief from her sleeve, which she carefully wrap around my hand. Hmm, red berry with note of chocolate and cream. You certainly like your sweet, don't you? Uh, you can tell all from my bar. I have an experience palette for the thing. If you're curious, I suppose I could give you a pretense of my own. Few things upon this earth are quite energizing as a fresh blood when you have acquired a taste, of course. She does look like she has a lot of get up and go, but drinking blood? That's the rush. Alright, I'm a little tired. Well, well if it is as good as you see it, a little wouldn't hurt. Oh, how adventurous! I'm very impressed! But my sweet switch, I was hardly serious. You know? To drink vampire blood is to become one of yourself after all. Really? What? Really? Yeah. Yeah, so be careful what you agree to, Faye. So maybe a number of benefits to vampirism, but you should think them over first. At any rate, At any rate I do know a less physical means to absorbing energy. It may not be affected as blood, but should prove a pick me up in a pinch. Oh. You mean like draining physic energy? I wiggle my fingers quickly at Carmilla and she shake her head, smiling briefly. Hmm. Something like that, yes. It's a spell called Lish Life. Yeah. It's not ominous. Ominous. But let's get to learning. Alright, darling. I'll teach you how to cast Life Lish. Good. Carmilla spent the rest of our break instructing me how to steal energy indirectly. It's pretty simple process. All you have to do is lock your eyes with your target after casting a spell. And you slowly drain their energy. Nice and straightforward. Not every, not even I could mess this up. I haven't had a chance to test it though. After she showed me, Carmina wouldn't even look at me. It's the awkward silence stretch between us for the same fact forever. Shortly after our break, a customer finally showed up and they were wearing a mean face for that spell business. Hey, I want to return this. I bring them quietly tap the small board next to counter ship. Well. We have no written policy on the every product in the store. Sorry. Why does that matter? My spell didn't work. I didn't want to see your manager. Uh, our eyes met and we just sort of stare at each other. It took me a second to gather my nerve, but I decided to put what I have learned to good use. Slowly, the man's shoulder began to sink. And I feel a bit of energy gradually wake me back up. Thankfully, after about five minutes, he shake his head and wobble off with a word. Yes, night shit win. And I fist bump into the air. I think I catch Camilla smiling at me out of the corner of my eyes. But when I go to look again, she seems to have vanished. To, to a professional? Or maybe I should be careful with this bell, as she told me. Not like I'm going to leeching out the answer to the hallway exit anytime soon.
So I guess that's all for this part of witches and warlocks. So we're going to learn another spell that we're going to get from those characters. And I will see you guys soon on the next part of Wish Warlock. So peace out.